It reminds me of, remember when Brick came out? Yes. And, and like, the poster, like, because I had to go see it at an art theater, because obviously Ryan Johnson was nobody then. You're right. Some would argue he's nobody now if they're not a not fan me. of Last Jedi. I know that's, like, your number two Star Wars film of all time. But it is. We're not, we're not here to discuss insanity. <laughs> It's amazing because there's so many movies that, you know, people like us who are huge film buffs never even heard of a lot of this stuff. Right, and I think that's, you know? it's it's almost like the Star Wars argument that we talk about of like, like I hate people who are like, no, no, the only good ones are the, are the four, five, six. Yeah. And like, no, no, then you don't like Star Wars. You like three movies that exist in the Star Wars universe. And you liked them because you watched them when you were a kid. Yeah. And so you were in the right frame of mind to like them. Yeah. He's now in his 20s, but having my brother-in-law who was a kid at the time. When those movies came out, really opened my eyes to like, oh, he loves these just as much as I love mine. He loves and the original, the, the, the prequels? new ones, yeah, because they were, you know, they yeah. were coming. He hadn't seen the originals at the time. I had to show him those. Yeah, and like, and, but he loved Star Wars just as much as I ever did. For Count Riley, because he I'm, he watched the new ones are going to be his jam. Like, like yeah, when he came out, when yeah. he was like of age to really start enjoying movies is around the time when Force Awakens came out. Yeah. So, like, the, that's, that's special. He loves Force Awakens. I think that his is number two. I think he likes A New Hope quite a bit. Okay. But well, like, that would make sense that he would like both of those two right. since the same movie. <laughs> we won't go down that rabbit hole. But, like, yeah, it's that. And I think that speaks to the same thing of, like, no, 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 like, if you actually love Star Wars, the first, the first three, one through three are the most Star Wars that Star Wars can be. George Lucas had every... It's possible. Full on Lucas yeah. to eleven. And as much as we think this is ours, it's not. It's his. Yeah. He created it, and then that's what he wanted to make. And he spent his money to do it. It, it. I don't love them either, but I don't think they're bad, and I don't not enjoy them. I enjoy it. like pod racing is fucking Dude, dope. I if people uh, trash an episode one, I have a blast watching episode Darth one. Darth Maul fight's super cool. As much as I actually don't even like Darth Maul until you get to the Clone Wars. And, and that's the thing is like if you're really into Star Wars, watch the other stuff. Yeah. Because Clone Wars will expand your enjoyment of the prequels. It totally will. That yeah. and even even the uh, cartoon. What is it? Jendi, the guy who did Samurai Jack. Yeah, yeah. The, the, cartoon, the, the other the first cartoon. ones. Yeah. The ones that are like yeah, five like, minutes each. Like the animated animated ones. Those yeah. are freaking those are dope. Fun. Yeah. Um, if you ever wonder why they even made Grievous, watch those. Cool. I rewatched the Cloverfield trilogy. Over, is it, is over it a pandemic? trilogy? Well, whatever. I rewatched. I re point is I rewatched Cloverfield. <laughs> More like Cleverfield, JJ. Yeah. Fuck all you guys who thought Lost was like nothing, because Lindelof has it. Well, he has it when he only does one season. Leftovers was three. It's still really good. The Watchmen is so good. Yeah. This movie, I think, is actually pretty tight. I think it's. I think there's symbolism everywhere, but I think it's all very explainable. And I'll, I know you 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 uh, knock JJ quite a bit. This is that mystery box that is very fun to unpack. What he, what he's referring to is is JJ's idea of storytelling is give somebody a box a mystery box if you would and they want to know what's in it and they, that's his idea of suspense he doesn't really care what the answer is he, he won't even yeah. necessarily give you the answer right. if you've watched his Star Wars movies you know he doesn't always give the answers right. it's, a good, it's a good story for another time yeah. whereas to give a, a different example Hitchcock's idea of storytelling and suspense is okay tell the audience something's going on but don't tell the characters yeah. let them know what they don't know there's a bomb under this table. They know it. We, the characters in the scene, do not know. When will it go off? Will it go off? That kind of thing. So I gravitate more towards the Hitchcock line of thing. But I like J.J. when I like J.J. I think he, you know... In Star Trek, I think, it's, he, I think all of his Star Trek are fun. fun. Yeah. I, I, like, and whether it's producer, like, like he produced Overlord, which I think is just an absolute blast. So, you know, like I can't, you know... I can't rip him all the time, but I, I enjoy giving him. His yeah, I mean, movies. I still, I still really, really love Super Eight. Super Eight's a blast. You know, you and know, I think as an original it was property, ahead of its time. I think, it, I think it's a great original property. I think it reveres Spielberg in a way that other people have tried to and failed. If it came out three years, four years, five years later, I bet it would have done way more business. Oh, because of fucking Eight. Stranger Things. Well, yeah, Stranger Things like basically just did what Super Eight did. Oh yeah, but they're like let's do Monster Squad and Super Eight together as a TV and, show. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Which don't keep listening. We both love, love Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love it. I just make fun of it too. Hawk shock. <laughs>